Welcome everyone, my name's Dom, and if you're here, hopefully you're here from the complete explanation on how to start working with ProRes footage and why you should record with ProRes and all that other stuff like that. So this um, video is going to be kind of working through how, you, you know, like what ProRes is, how you can start to get to ProRes today while we wait for the iPhone 13 Pro um, for Apple to enable the ProRes um, recording, you know, straight to record to ProRes video that we talked about in some of the other videos um, uh, to get onto the iPhone 13 Pro. So, um, but you know, even when you have that ProRes footage, like what are you gonna do with it? What are some of the things you can do with it? So like for right now, we're just gonna take things slow. I'm trying out some new stuff here and I know that um, I've had a few requests for like different lessons and tutorials and stuff like that. So for now, all we're gonna do is get this footage that I just shot for the video that hopefully you just saw the complete explanation. We are going to take this video and we're gonna ProRes it. So um, we have a little bit of a process here because we ProRes everything, um, but it is shot in, uh, in an MP4 and an H.264 format. And I could explain uh, more of that stuff um, if you guys want. So leave me a comment down below. Like I said, I'm trying something new here. So I am more than happy to expand into more detail in the future. We'll see how you guys like this stuff. So, uh, but we have this footage here and I want to ProRes it. And the reason I want to ProRes it is because um, I need to, um, you know, I, I want to start editing, right? <laughs> obviously. So what we're going to do is um, since my camera, my 70D, uh, breaks footage up, and that's actually not uncommon, I guess, for DSLRs. Uh, but since it breaks the footage up, I use this as an opportunity to stitch the footage together. So um, what that means is since I have all these broken chunks, and I know I'm going to encode this whole thing into ProRes, um, effectively what I do is I, I combine it, and then when I send it off to go get rendered, which for now I'm just going to do uh, right on the computer, I we have a, a little like rendering Mac Pro that's set up. If you've ever seen that on, on my desk behind me, you look out for it. It's like a shiny tin can. Uh, we actually she's done a lot of the stuff um, to get rendered um, right to that. So that way the computers, you know, we can, we can work on, you know, like Aaron and I are, you know, we're working on stuff and we don't have to like bog down one of our computers waiting for stuff to render. It's not important for the purpose of this video. What's important is how we ProRes. So um, I'm using Adobe Premiere, by the way. So Adobe Premiere is going to use uh, Adobe Media Encoder. Um, so your mileage may vary. However, when encoding into ProRes, as long as you know how to encode um, and some of the parameters that you, you know, to look out for, um, you will, uh, you know, definitely this, this should, this should translate to any, to, to most uh, uh, video software, as long as you have access to it. So, um, okay. So the first thing that we're going to do is since I have this sequence here, I want to do a quick check, make sure that these frames are lined up. And you can see that even though this is, this is MP4 um, and H.264, like my iMac is like whatever, like a nine core or something or other, right? So like, I'm going to have, you know, I have the horsepower to run this stuff, but this is 1080p footage right so like in 4k um and i might be able to load up some 4k footage here okay so i brought in some uh some 4k footage here that was shot on the gh4 and if we look we can see here that my scrubbing performance has gone down significantly and you could see the difference is just i mean it's it's and this is on one eighth quality here right so if we put this into full um yeah, it's actually not doing too bad, but you can see here it's hitching and stuttering. If we look at here, you know, this is, this is 1080p. So we can see this file here. This is ProRes footage. Okay. And I can even show you here. Uh, where is it? Da -da 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 -da. Properties. Here we go. So we look at the properties we can see, and hopefully I can zoom in on this, um, that this is, come on, where are you? Here we go. Created with uh, media encoder. Let's see, it is, here we go, Apple ProRes. So we can see here that this footage is Apple ProRes. And even though this footage is Apple ProRes and still in 4K, um, like the performance is, is better, but it's still hitching a little bit. And I'm gonna explain to you how we're gonna fix some of that too, because the biggest thing here isn't the rendering performance, this becomes a network traffic performance thing. But we're gonna get more into that here in a second. So let's go ahead, let's get started. Um, I'm not worried about this footage being in here. So you have your footage, um, let's uh, use this. So we're gonna export media. And then we have our, um, our our Windows Media Encoder exporter thing here. We can export directly into uh, directly with uh, what's it called with Premiere. So there's a lot of settings here. You you gotta you gotta factor in. But um, Apple has a really good um, page, and I'll go ahead and I'll put this link down in the description below um, that you can check out. It's a very brief overview on what settings um, you know which particular ProRes that you're going to use for your footage based on what it is. And we can see here I end up using 422, um, which is great for anything that's 10. ADP at uh, 30 frames per second, which is exactly what I record in. Right now, you can go up and up and up and get some really high quality stuff, but there's a few things you want to keep in mind, right? You want to keep in mind your bit rate because your bit rate is going to influence how large your files are, right? So, um, and again, if you have like alpha channels and if you have a bunch of other stuff, if you're using HDR and you're using 4K or 8K, like all this stuff is great, but these files can get 
huge. So one of the things that you may want to look into is possibly a network storage or some kind of cloud storage, um, you know, some kind of external, something to keep your footage on because the stuff gets massive. This is not stuff you want to keep on your machine. You want to edit it and then you want to move it off or you want to work on it directly um, as a, uh, like off of a network drive, right? So um, I will, like I said, I'll throw this down in the link below um, in the description for, for this page and you can find it. Okay, so a quick apology. So we're actually going to, um, we're actually going to be throwing this into media encoder. So I do apologize for that. Um, the reason is that we want to do uh, multiple, um, we want to be able to do multiple encodings at the same time. And I'm going to show you why that's very important because I'm going to show you guys how to use proxies as well. So that's a super important thing. So what we're going to do, um, we set up our parameters, right? So we want to make sure we're using the right ProRes, but we'll be able to change all that stuff um, in our, um, in our, so you know what, let's go ahead, let's just let's go ahead and send this off. So we're actually going to send this off to a media encoder um, for the specific reason of being able to proxy it, which is also a very important part when working with ProRes. There's a bunch of reasons why. So let's go ahead and hit the Q button. We're going to send this off to Media Encoder. And then, um, yeah, we'll we'll look at, uh, I'll show you guys how to do all that. Okay, so now that we're in Media Encoder, we can see that we have our jobs queued up here. So what we want to do is I already have a preset for my ProResing. So in Media Encoder, one of the cool things that you can do is you can preset a lot of this stuff in your preset browser. So you'll, you want to mess around, um, but you can effectively, uh, if you know that you're going to be shooting with a specific camera in a specific way, you can kind of, you know, just do all the work uh, beforehand. You'll end up saving yourself a whole bunch of time. And there's, there's a bunch of settings in here. So like I said, I can go through in more detail um, if you guys want how a lot of this stuff works, what the settings are for, answer a lot of questions hopefully for you guys um, you know to help get you through this because this stuff can be very overwhelming but you can kind of get a look here I'm using 422 HQ um, I'm basing everything on the source footage that goes in and that is it I'm not using racks uh, maximize render quality I'm not using any other stuff like that now what we want to do is we want to add an additional output. And so what we can do here, one of the cool things about media encoder is that we can encode things in parallel. So we have the same footage, um, all getting encoded at the same time in the same way. So what we can do is we want to also attach a proxy. Now on the Apple website, I believe it mentions if I can get to it, why can I not get to it? What is going on? There we go. <clears throat> okay. So I, it mentions proxies down here. And what's nice about proxies is that you effectively get like the ProRes experience, but it's very small, right? It's not lossless. The purpose of a proxy um, is, is effectively it attaches itself to your, 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 your footage that you're actually going to be rendering your final video with. But Premiere or whatever software you're using, if it uses proxies, um, will use that footage instead um, for video editing. And it's really nice if you have very large file assets like 4K and stuff like that. It's really nice because it's a smaller footprint. So it will use up more file size because it's not like small, right? It still has a decently sized bit rate, but not nearly as big as true ProRes. You can attach this to whatever you want and you're going to get much smaller files and you're going to be able to save yourself a whole bunch of time um, in, in performance and what have you and headaches by using proxies. So while we use proxies kind of for everything. And it's nice because especially if you're running, you know, a network drive over Wi-Fi or anything, or you don't have a very fast network, like pro, uh, proxies are small, so it's much easier for the computer to run. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and we're going to run this guy now, and then I will see you guys as soon as it's done. Okay, so we're back and the footage has been ProResed and it is ready to be worked on. So what we're going to do is um, we have a proxy, right? So we want to see how we want to attach a proxy. So if you right click any footage, you can attach proxies right there. You're going to hit the window. You're going to hit attach. If you have the file names set up in such a way that you basically have whatever your file name is, and then at the end of that file name, it says proxy. Premiere is pretty good at kind of uh, creating that link. Um, basically like if, yeah, if the file name is, is one thing and then you have your proxy set up so that way um, your your the file name is the exact same as the, the whatever the source you wanna call it, but it all just ends in like underscore proxy. Um, it can like bind all the different proxies. So if you have like multiple chunks of, of, of ProRes footage that you did all at once, um, that's a really quick and snappy way to kind of link it all together. But um, now that we're here, what we're gonna do is we are going to kind of uh, look at what we have here. So if we if we compare the two here, let's take a look. So the first thing I want to do is where is it? Properties, properties, properties. There we go. Okay. So the file size here, we could see here, this is 31 gigs. And I believe this footage is like 20 minutes, right? So this is 31 gigs 
for the file. And the original files themselves, I think collectively were like four gigs each. That's like four gigs, four gigs, four gigs. That's all. It basically doubled it, right? So when you're dealing with 4K or, or higher frame rates too, like that can go up, right? If you have alpha channels, if you have HDR, if you have all that other stuff like that, like you're you're just gonna you're just gonna see like massive storage stuff. So we end up keeping all of this stuff on our network drive and then it's cloud backed up and all that other stuff like that. So now that we have our proxy attached, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna make ourselves a new sequence from this clip. We're gonna put this here. So now we can see here that um, we have the, the ProRes footage, right? And it's one big chunk and we can scroll, we can scrub, we can do all sorts of stuff to it, right? Like if we really wanted to, we can start adding a bunch of effects. And what's nice is that because it's so, just like I said in the video, because it's so, um, uh, not like it's it's because it's so not encoded the computer can spend more time um in real time rendering whatever effects that you that you know that you put on it right so if we do something like this and then we you know we expand it um all of this stuff has to be um rendered in real time on this footage so we can throw all of these effects on here and we can see um, especially when doing stuff like warp stabilizing on b-roll this is going to save you a bunch of time because that's less decoding that the that premiere or whatever it is you're using after effects has to do um, in order to be able to like work with the pixel so we could see here we could do all this stuff like that and look i mean it's still running like if this was if we let's add some rotation on this too um so let's do this and we could see here like look it's still running you know, we're still getting decent performance here, which is just, it's just crazy to think we're running all of these different effects. If we were to start throwing color on there, you know, really messing with, um, let's see how much we can mess this up here. Let's see. No, I don't want curves. Um, actually, yeah, give me that. Let's see. So we're just going to, uh, let's see, we're going to add that. We're going to decrease some green. You know, we're going to, we're going to make this all this, we're going to make this all crazy. Like, look at this. If we were to add another wave warp to this, you know, we can get really freaking weird with it. Um, you know, here we got this, we'll add this and we'll see what we can do to uh, really mess this up. But see, look at, I mean, it's again, it's hitching a little bit now, but can you imagine doing this with H.264? Like, yeah, it's having to render. This, this is like a completely different frame. This looks nothing like the original footage, but you get the idea. This is significantly easier for your computer to work with. And we can go ahead and we can remove all those attributes. We can remove all those attributes. There we go. We'll take all that stuff off. And so when you're doing your simple edits, this stuff is super lightweight. The computer is barely working at all. Let's see, activity monitor here. <clears throat> so let's look at our CPU load here. So we can see uh, if we bring this, we're gonna bring this over here and then we're gonna bring this here. Okay, so now we can see if we're scrubbing on this, like we're not getting we're not getting any CPU work. We're not getting any CPU work. Let's compare that to our um, our regular non prores footage here. So we have all these chunks. So let's see. Is that any more significant? Maybe with this machine it might not be. We'll see. No, I'm not seeing. Oh, it's like a difference of like one percent. So that might be you know just this particular machine. But I have I have worked this um, this same method on um, less powerful machines. And the difference, especially when you have like multiple pieces of footage is significant. So right now this is probably nothing for this machine, right? But when you have, you know, multiple camera angles and, you know, multiple visual effects, this stuff will add up and you will be just amazed at how much better your, um, your editing experience and workflow can be. So guys, that wraps up this tips video. I know um, we didn't get a whole lot into the editing stuff like that. I just kind of want to show you how to start working with ProRes eventually when the iPhone 12 does get ProRes, um, you know, you'll just be able to just dump this stuff right onto your server or right onto whatever and start editing it right away, you know, make some proxies really quick if you need to. Um, and yeah, it's it's super duper awesome. So let me know any questions you guys have down below. Get yourself subscribed, get yourself commented, all other stuff like that too, if you want to see more of this kind of content, because I really like kind of doing this kind of stuff. So um, and I'll keep throwing them um, into the tips and what have you, or maybe I'll do like complete tutorials, whatever you want to call it. Um, so this is phase one. So again, guys, if you like this kind of stuff, let me know down below. Um, if you have questions, let me know down below and I will get working on, you know, if there's eventually, if there's, a, you know, enough momentum built up in this, um, I will be sure to, uh, to to make more content like this. So thank you guys so much for checking it out. Uh, please share the video, like all that typical stuff I say in the normal videos. And as always, talk to you soon.